Okay, hi everyone and welcome to another of my video tutorials. In this video we are going to look at how you can fix very bright or overexposed parts of your photo. Now when doing landscape photography more often than not there are extremes of light and dark within your scene and um, that this is essentially called dynamic range. The dynamic range is the difference between the very brightest part of your scene and the darkest part of your scene, also known as contrast essentially. And um, the thing is with photography, the camera cannot handle such extremes of light and dark. Our eyes can handle much, much more. We can look at a scene that has very bright parts, say for example a very bright sky and a quite a dark foreground. Now we can look at it with our own eyes and uh, we can see a lot more detail in the sky and in the shadow areas. But the camera cannot. Now depending on which camera you have of course, some of the um, more expensive higher end modern cameras can handle a larger dynamic range than some of the cheaper or older cameras. But still, they have their limitations and they will never match what we see with our eyes. Now in one of my previous videos we looked at exposure blending to overcome this problem. And we need to use exposure blending when the extremes of light and dark are too much to actually capture within one image. In that case you need to take two images, one exposed for the bright parts and one exposed for the dark parts, and we need to blend them. But it can often be the case that the difference between the bright and the dark is not so great. And you can actually capture it within one image. Although you still will need to do some work to retrieve the lost detail in the highlights. Now, um, if you if you plan to do this, then um, as always, the advice is to make sure that you shoot in RAW and you save the RAW files because then with the RAW files you have much more scope to recover any lost detail in the bright parts of your scene. Of course there is a limitation it is, as I said if the extremes of light and dark are too much then you won't be able to recover. But if the difference between the bright and the dark parts is not so great you can actually capture it in one image and then uh, you can actually retrieve some of that lost detail. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you a few examples, uh, different types of photos where we can do this. So in this first photo, shot on uh, Loshin Island in Croatia, the sun was rising, as you can see, and although there was some cloud which did diffuse the intensity of that sun, if not for that cloud, then the difference between the foreground and that sky would have been much greater. So the cloud has diffused it a bit, but it's still much brighter. Now, of course, if I'd have exposed here for just the sky, then this boathouse and all this foreground would have been much, much darker. Um, and it's always better to expose more to the right to capture more of the shadow detail if you know you will be able to pull back the details in the highlights. You can lighten and lift the shadows but sometimes that depending again on your camera the you can bring up some noise with that so it's always better to actually push it to the right. So that's what I did in this case. So I know full well that in this image although this sky is very very bright there is still it hasn't pushed it off the edge too far. If we look at our histogram, our histogram gives us an idea of our shadows and highlights. So over here you can see on the highlight area, it is pushed off the edge and the highlight warning or highlight clipping warning uh, triangle is lit. So if we click that triangle, then these red bits give you an area, give you an idea of what areas are actually overexposed. So it's not that much. When you look at it. Again if we turn this off, another way we can do this is to hold down the Alt key and click any of these buttons, say exposure or the whites, and again it will highlight the areas that are overexposed. 
So I know that tells me that I can very, very easily retrieve the overexposed areas and the loss detail in that sky. So how we do it, there are several things that we can do, but typically with a sky, the first thing you want to do is the highlights tool. So if we just pull back the highlights here, already that's really, really made a massive difference to that sky. Look at it, isn't it fantastic? And now you can see that our uh, warning triangle's gone off, our histogram is now pushed back and it's no longer clipped. We can also hold down the Alt key, click our exposure, now it's completely black. So I have recovered all of the overexposed areas just by using the highlights tool. It's really, it was that simple in this image. Now we can open this into Photoshop now. That was in, in Adobe Camera Raw, of course. Now we can open that raw file into Adobe Photoshop. And you can even, now I often find that the, um, even though you've pulled back the highlights as far as you can in Adobe Camera Raw, I often find that it helps to tweak it a bit more in Photoshop. So you, to do that, you go up to Image, Adjustments, Shadows and Highlights, to bring up the Shadows and Highlights tool. And here, I can give, pull this back typically another 10. I always pull the radius up a bit. And that's made an even better job of pulling back those details. So that has perfected that photo. That simple and quick. I can also, again, use my curves tool to tweak the contrast a bit. And there you have it. In less than five minutes, I've recovered the over bright areas and the overexposed areas within that photo, and now I've got my shot. I didn't need to do a double exposure. I didn't need to do any exposure blending. It was done that quickly. Now, another situation where you can have this kind of a problem is when photographing the moon. Now, if you want more of an insight into the best ways to photograph the moon, then check out my uh, previous video on that, which I'll put a link to up here now. But um, typically, uh, the best time to photograph the moon is at dusk or dawn, at the blue hour, essentially, because uh, once it's extremely, once it's completely dark, then the contrast, the difference between the brightness and bright parts and the shadows is far too great. And you will have to do double exposures. There's just no way to capture it in one image. But at dusk or dawn, it's still a lot enough ambient light in the sky to uh, provide some balance between the two. You can pretty much capture it in one shot without having to do anything. But there will reach a point where you can still capture it in one shot, but you'll still need to do a little bit of work to retrieve the lost detail in the moon itself. So in this case, of course, you know, I'm uh, I'm exposing to make sure that the castle, the lit castle and everything is perfectly exposed. And obviously, if I try to expose for the moon in this case, then the castle and the foreground will be too dark. So the priority is always to expose to the right as much as possible, but without burning out the detail in the bright parts too much that you can't retrieve it. So at this point, I was still able to do that. Okay, now if we zoom into the moon itself, we can see there's still quite a bit of detail there, but there are areas around here that are burned out. So if, again, if I uh, we hold down the Alt key, click that, there we can see. Okay, now the thing is, if I use my highlights tool like I did here before, The problem is, it's also pulling back the highlights here on the castle itself. So if I pull that back to about there, it's done a nice job on the moon. If I uh, hold down this, yeah, it's pretty much pulled back all the detail there. It's done a nice job on the moon. But the problem is it's also affected the castle itself, which I don't want. So 
we reset that, what we're going to do here is go into the moon itself and come up here to the right and select the adjustment brush. Let's zero that, all of that. Now in this case, we're going to brush the area that we want to affect. So in this case, if I brush the moon itself, then I can make adjustments just to that area that I've brushed without affecting anything else. And in this case, of course, without affecting the, the castle itself. So the way that we do that is we come up here, we select our brush size. So you want to select a, a, a good brush size to brush that area. Okay, come down here pull back your highlights tool. You can pull it right back. You can still make more adjustments afterwards. So if we pull it right back for now, yeah, and then we can clearly see the areas where we're brushing. So if we now go around and brush the moon itself, there we go. We can continue to make those adjustments. So, because that area now where you've got that little red marker that shows that that's where the brush tool has been applied so i don't have to undo it and keep reapplying it the the brush tool has been applied there and now i can just make whatever adjustments i want you know i can i can do exposure adjustments contrast i can use any of these tools and it will only affect the area that i've brushed here so in this case although that's that's too much obviously I want to pull really my highlights back to about here now that's just enough to bring back all of that lovely detail in the moon if we now pull that back now you can see my castle hasn't been affected in this case just the moon itself now I can open that into Photoshop perfect Job done. Again, it's that simple. Now another situation where you may have this problem is when photographing water. And in particular, when photographing rapids or waterfalls. Because in these situations, of course, uh, the rapids produce a lot of white water, very white, frothy water. And of course, white is a very, very bright color and also reflects the light. Now the rule of thumb of course when photographing water in particular these situations waterfalls rapids you want to shoot in overcast conditions. If you've got uh, bright sunlight direct sunlight falling on this water you would never capture it in one shot. But even then you can still sometimes have a bit of a contrast issue. Now, this was shot on an overcast day but of course this area down here where the water was really charging down was really really bright and really really white so we've still got a bit of an overexposed area now if we look at this it looks it's, it's completely white yeah it looks like a completely white canvas but if we go again up here turn this on we can actually see that it's only really this area is completely overexposed so the area of burnout is only here we turn that back off so again the way to deal with this first of all we can try pulling back our highlights which has done a nice job up here and again let's come to our brush tool and then we want to brush the area down here that we want to recover now of course because this is all just completely white it can sometimes be hard to see uh, where you have effectively brushed the area that you want to brush essentially you know you could leave gaps and of course um, if you're just brushing willy-nilly you won't be able to see that so there is an option up here called mask options and if we tick this it will toggle the visibility of the mask overlay and you want to choose the color obviously white on white is not going to be any good you won't be able to see that so change the color to say something like red so now with the red mask we can brush the area that we want to affect and we can clearly see that we are effectively brushing the whole area that we want 
make sure that there are no gaps at all. There we go. And now we can make our adjustments. So if we pull back the highlights, you could turn this mask off if it's in the way. Pull back the highlights, pull back the exposure. So if we pull that back just a touch, we don't want to put it too far because there you go, it's not, it's looking ugly, isn't it? Now you see this bit in the middle is we're not going to be able to make any, uh, pull back any detail there. It's completely lost, but we can subtly pull back some of the detail around it so that at least it looks a bit more realistic and natural. So we can look at before and after now from this. There we go. See, no detail there, all completely burned out. Here, we've covered much more detail here, a little bit more detail down here and around here. So at least it's a massive improvement. If you're happy with that, again, open it into Photoshop. Again, come up here, use the shadows and highlights tool here in Photoshop. Maybe we can, yeah, again, Again, we've brought back even more, even more detail overall there. Even better. So that's a drastic improvement. If we go to the levels, now we can see there's still a bit of clipping. That will be this big area down here. Okay, but overall, again, if we hold down the Alt key, click this button here, we can see that we've reduced the overexposed areas right down to that tiny little bit there. Massive improvement, massive improvement. Again, a bit of curves, add a bit of contrast to it. And there we go, a massive improvement. So there you go, three examples. Pulling back the detail in an overexposed sky in an overexposed moon and in overexposed water. Okay, so I hope that's been useful to you. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, then please give it a like. And if you haven't subscribed already, I'd be very grateful if you do subscribe, check out some of my other videos and stay tuned for uh, future video tutorials. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.